Hi everyone. This is Natural Language Passwords, recorded for Linux Fest Northwest 2020. This presentation is for those who are interested in an innovative approach to generating memorable passwords. Passwords are a daily part of life for anybody involved in technology. There are lock screens, online accounts, and apps that all demand that we create passwords and log in. You've probably heard a lot of advice on how to make a good password. Everyone knows your password must be eight characters long, and really you should include numbers. Actually, did I say eight characters? Better make that password 12 characters long. And use both upper and lowercase letters, of course, and throw in some symbols for good measure. This is what a lot of our passwords look like. The problem is that passwords like these don't provide much security, and worse, they provide an unmeasurable amount of security. Maybe hackers will guess your password, and maybe they won't. How can you tell whether or not your password is good enough? Most of the time, people have no idea. At my organization, all 500 employees use passwords that are about 30 characters long. These passwords are not just long, but so random that it would take decades to guess one. You can measure how strong these passwords are without any complicated math. And the most interesting thing is that these passwords are pretty easy to remember. I call this system natural language passwords. In this video, I'll describe how you can use this same system to create really great passwords. I want to say up front, though, you should use this system sparingly. The idea isn't to memorize dozens of 30-character passwords. I recommend memorizing one password. This is the password that unlocks your password manager. Then, let the password manager remember the rest of your passwords for you. I know this doesn't work for everybody, but personally, I don't want to have to remember a bunch of passwords. Regardless, for the passwords you do need to commit to memory, natural language passwords will make it as painless as possible while maintaining the level of security that you want. Now, before we get too far, I want to briefly mention where this system evolved from. Arnold Reinhold invented the Diceware system about 25 years ago. And Diceware is a superb system for generating passwords. His website has a detailed explanation. But the original Diceware suffered from some quirks that have hampered mainstream adoption. And many people have never heard of it, let alone use it. Recently, the EFF made substantial improvements to Diceware. This revitalization of Diceware inspired me to work on the system. Let's start at the beginning and explore what makes a password useful for security. Passwords are memorized secrets. They give you access to a system or information because you know the secret, and they prevent access by those who do not know the secret. In order to do its job, a memorized secret must be difficult to guess. What makes a secret difficult to guess, though? Let's look at some padlocks and the basic math that shows you how difficult a password is to guess. Let's imagine using a combination lock to secure your gym locker. What do you think about this one in the corner? This combination lock is way too simple. With only one dial to turn, it's obvious that there are only 10 possible combinations you could use to lock it, 0 through 9. If someone wanted to open this lock, but didn't know the correct combination, it would take a maximum of 10 guesses to open the lock. But in reality, the correct combination would be guessed in about half that time, since it's not likely that it would take all 10 guesses to stumble upon the correct number. There are a few ways to make this lock more secure. We could opt for a lock with more dials. How much more secure is it? Multiply the number of choices on the first dial by the number of choices on the second dial, and you get a maximum of 100 possible combinations. Again, someone purely guessing would likely find the correct combination after about half as many guesses. With only 100 available combinations, and a successful guess expected after only 50, it wouldn't take very many tries to open this lock. Adding a third dial means the number of possibility rises to 10, times 10, times 10, or 1,000. Would this be secure enough for your gym locker, though? If it takes a thief five seconds to guess a combination, and we presume that the correct combination will be guessed after 500 attempts, you would expect protection for about 40 minutes. It's important to note that a thief might get lucky and guess your combination on the very first try, but that's unlikely. The thief might also be terribly unlucky and end up needing to try every single combination, only succeeding on the final guess. But that's also unlikely. 
you should assume that most of the time, it will take about half the maximum number of possibilities and guesses. Maybe you want to secure your gym locker for an hour or two while you're working out, and 40 minutes of protection doesn't cut it. The simplest way of increasing the maximum number of possible combinations is to continue adding dials. With four dials, there are 10,000 possibilities. Our hypothetical thief would likely need to guess about 5,000 times, taking far too long to open the locker. This lock should be good enough security, not by making the locker totally impossible to open, but by making the correct combination too time-consuming to find. Combination locks don't have to be numeric. If you had four dials, each dial sporting 10 letters of the alphabet, the calculation works the same. There would be 10,000 possible combinations of those letters. If you had a large enough lock with large enough dials, you could fit a whole alphabet on each dial. With four dials of 26 letters, the lock would offer nearly half a million possible combinations. Notice that we now have two methods of increasing the security of the lock. Increase the number of characters we can choose, in other words, the size of the dial, or increase the number of times we choose, meaning how many dials are on the lock. Either method will increase the maximum number of possibilities and make it much harder for the thief to guess the correct combination. The caveat here is that these combinations must always be completely random. If you set your combination to 1, 2, 3, 4, or A, B, C, D, don't expect much security. Those combinations may be the first guesses a thief tries. The same math works just as well for passwords as it does for combination locks. A four-letter password made up of the 26 lowercase letters also offers the same half a million possibilities. Adding in uppercase letters doubles the number of options on each dial, so to speak. And look at the number of possible combinations. This password is now one of 7 million different possibilities. We could continue increasing the strength of our password by adding in numerals and symbols, but there are only so many keys on the keyboard that are easy to type. So let's just make the password longer. Adding a fifth dial to this password brings our maximum possibilities up to 380 million. Now you might wonder at this point if we've gone a little bit too far. Who on earth would have the patience to hunt through millions and millions of possible passwords just to find yours? Well, it turns out that computers are very good at quickly guessing passwords. Computers make good tools for hackers who often want unauthorized access to your systems and information. Guessing your password can be an easy way to get that unauthorized access. A single home PC, for example, can make 50 billion guesses per second under the right circumstances. At that rate, it will try every combination possible for this five-character password almost instantly. We have to continue lengthening our password, otherwise a hacker will guess it quickly. Even at eight characters long, any password of just upper and lower case letters will be found in 18 minutes when attacked at a rate of 50 billion guesses per second. In order to calculate the time a hacker would need to guess one of these passwords, we need to know the maximum number of possibilities. If our password is eight characters long and each character is selected from 52 letters, we do the multiplication, 52 times 52 times 52 times 52, etc. That's a lot of 52s though, so the shorthand way of expressing the same calculation is 52 raised to the power of eight. It means the same thing. Anyway, it's quite a lot of possibilities. 53,000 billion. That is a large number. But we want to know how long it would take to guess the correct password. So let's divide by the guessing rate, which is 50 billion guesses per second for a single PC. The result is the number of seconds required to make every possible guess. In this case, it would take 1,069 seconds, or about 18 minutes, to try every combination of an eight-character alphabetic password. Because of the very high rate of guessing a hacker might use against your password, extremely high maximum possibilities are required for security. Millions of combinations aren't sufficient. Billions aren't sufficient. Your password must be a needle in a haystack of trillions upon trillions of possible passwords so that a hacker has a near zero likelihood of guessing your password. 
Okay, with that bit of math out of the way, we're well prepared to make informed decisions about your passwords. You can calculate how resistant a password will be to guessing by dividing the maximum number of possible passwords by the rate at which a hacker will attempt to guess your password. This tells you the time an attacker needs to successfully guess one of your passwords. You also know that in reality, it will likely only take half that long. I mentioned Diceware earlier. Diceware has several excellent features. The first is that instead of assembling a password from numbers, letters, or symbols, you use words. This is analogous to each dial on the combination lock having a selection of words instead of a selection of numbers. And if each dial offered a selection of 26 words, these two passwords would be equivalently difficult to guess. When logging in, you type a word-based password as boat space dog space pen space sky. In practice, this is very natural. People are accustomed to typing words separated by spaces because that's a sentence's natural rhythm. And even though word-based passwords tend to be longer, you'll find that they're much faster to type than a hodgepodge of numbers, letters, and symbols. Coming back to the calculation, a selection of 26 words used four times is equivalent to a selection of 26 letters used four times. In both cases, there are nearly half a million possibilities. Using words can greatly increase our password's strength, however. While we're limited to about 100 keys on a typical keyboard, most people know tens of thousands of words. For example, assembling a password using four words drawn from a list of just 5,000 skyrockets the maximum possible combinations to 625 trillion. The other aspect of Diceware is that the words are chosen randomly by rolling six-sided dice, like you'd find in a board game or at a casino. The outcome of the dice rolls determines which words go into your password. This is an easy way of ensuring that your password is random, which is necessary for security. Let's say you roll some dice. You roll four, one, two, five, six. You'd use a Diceware word list to look up the word that matches that roll, which happens to be the word boat. Repeat another few times and you'll have your password. When rolling five six-sided dice, there are 7,776 outcomes possible. That's six raised to the power of five if you have your calculator handy. Diceware word lists are sized so that every result of the dice roll is associated with a unique word. When rolling five dice, the word list contains 7,776 words, which is how Arnold Reinhold's original Diceware is structured. If we used a word list designed for five dice to create our password, we use the standard calculation to find the maximum number of possibilities, which is a staggering 3,600 trillion combinations. The EFF word lists come in different sizes. There are the traditional five roll lists, but also smaller lists used with four dice, which contain 1,296 words. If we use the smaller word list designed for four dice, the number of possibilities is down to two trillion. You may wonder, why not just use the bigger list? Isn't that more secure? Hold that thought, we'll see why in a minute. We're coming around to what makes natural language passwords different from the original Diceware. The first thing I realized was that I could use lists of different sizes. The first word can be drawn from a small word list and the second from a large word list. Normally Diceware passwords are created from a single list of words. Using different sizes of lists does reduce the maximum number of possible combinations to 100 trillion, which isn't as good as using the large word list for each word. But using different sized lists allows us to do something clever. Let's say your first word is drawn from the small list. You roll four dice and get three, one, one, two. You look up three, one, one, two in the small list and see that your first word is blue. You then roll five dice to produce the second word and get four, one, two, five, three. Looking at the large word list, you find your second word is ink. These two words form a pair, since the small list contains only adjectives, 
and the large list contains only nouns. Adjective noun pairs reflect normal grammar patterns, which I think makes them easier to memorize. Let's generate our second pair of words. You roll four dice and get 2533. Three. You look up 2533 three in the adjective list and see that your first word is ugly. You next roll five dice and get 64621. Looking at the noun list, you find your second word is bird. These two words form your second adjective noun pair. This password follows the adjective noun, adjective noun pattern. Our final password is then blue ink, ugly bird. It's one out of 101 trillion possible passwords. As usual, you type each word separated by a space. I find that this style of password mimics our natural language patterns. When the adjective and noun pair nicely, they become almost a single object. So rather than memorizing four unrelated words, you're memorizing two objects, some blue ink and an ugly bird. A password like this is suitable for online accounts, such as email and social media. What I mean is that at an expected guess rate of 100,000 guesses per second, a hacker would spend an average of 16 years before finding your password. Now, personally, I think 100,000 guesses every second is likely to be noticed and shut down by an online service, but it's nice to know that even if an online service allowed that kind of attack, you're still covered for a very long time. Diceware-based systems like natural language passwords are flexible. There are situations where 16 years of protection just aren't needed. On a home desktop computer, for example, you don't need to defend against someone making 100,000 guesses per second at your keyboard. For that scenario, a single pair of words should suffice. Guessing a two-word password is still quite difficult, being one of 10 million possibilities. Even if someone could try one guess per second at your desktop, they would need an average of eight weeks to find your password. That's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with no sleep, typing a guess every second. On the other hand, there are situations where a hacker may be able to guess at an extremely high rate. I mentioned a single home PC guessing at 50 billion per second, but hackers have many computers and combining their power makes them guess faster. For protecting your password manager, encrypted files, and other types of sensitive information, I recommend that you use a three-pair password. Six-word natural language passwords are randomly drawn from a billion trillion possible other passwords. A password like the one shown is expected to withstand a trillion guesses per second for an average of 16 years. You can use various password lengths with the natural language password system. There are times when you may want to use a pair of words, two pairs of words, or three pairs of words, depending on the expected threat. To make your own password, you'll need some supplies. You'll need at least one die, though having five is a little bit quicker. You'll also need the two natural language password lists of words. There's an adjective list and a noun list. I recommend printing these out, but if you don't have a printer, you can use the PDF on your screen. It's also handy to have a pen and some scratch paper. Just to be clear, it's completely unnecessary to keep these word lists a secret. Diceware systems are secure even when hackers are fully aware of which lists of words you use to create your password. This is why you can use lists of words that are publicly available on the internet for practice, let's pretend that you're going to subscribe to an email service. Fortunately, the email service doesn't place any outdated constraints on the complexity of your password. It won't force you to add uppercase letters, numbers, or symbols. You'll need a password made of four words. Visit the Natural Language Passwords GitHub page to download both the adjective and noun lists. For the first word, roll your die. It's best to roll it vigorously so that it bounces around unpredictably. Simply dropping the die on a table doesn't cut it. You can use a cup to shake your die and then toss the die into a box. Read the face-up number and write it down on a piece of scratch paper. 
Repeat rolling the die until you have four numbers. Then, look up the word in the adjective list that matches this four-digit number. If you rolled 6312, your word might be cool. Now turn to the noun list and roll five additional numbers. If you rolled 33562, your word might be pizza. That's the first pair of words. Repeat this process once more to get your second pair of words. Don't be tempted to choose words you prefer or reorder them. The security of the system depends on having the dice, and only the dice, choose the words. All right, your password is ready to use. I recommend keeping the scratch paper with you until you've reliably memorized your password. That may take weeks. If you're concerned that you might someday forget the password, store the scratch paper in a safe. Otherwise, destroy the scratch paper once you've memorized your password. Diceware systems usually provide a printable word list. This is good for an individual who wants to generate a password or two. You don't even need a computer, just a few pieces of paper and some dice. But if you're a programmer and want to incorporate this system into your software, you'll also find a MariaDB database export of the word lists in the GitHub repository. You can use this database to filter the word lists, perhaps removing plural nouns so that there's no confusion over whether a password contained nice dog or nice dogs. A Python utility script is included that will pull 1,296 adjectives from the database and associate those words with dice rolls. You're basically dynamically printing the diceware word list. It'll do the same thing for the nouns. I'll update the database of words from time to time as I refine it with the primary goal of providing enough adjectives and nouns that pair nicely together. I'd like to take a moment to speak philosophically about passwords. We have decades of experience with passwords. Many best practices enshrined in government regulations have turned out to not work so well. Expecting users to remember random strings of symbols just doesn't work. Requiring password changes every 90 days doesn't work. NIST has recently done a 180 on most of the password requirements that have been common wisdom for decades. The revised special publication goes into all the details. I'd like to go one step further and suggest that users should never select their own passwords. That's one of the elegant things about Diceware, that the dice choose the password. Authentication systems should behave similarly. When I sign up for an online service, the service should tell me what my password will be. This means that the service must be able to generate simple but secure passwords. And I think that natural language passwords are a good candidate. Thank you, Linux Fest Northwest 2020, for the opportunity to talk about this new system.